will uh, start our tutorial for this morning. Right, so as I uh, informed yesterday, we will have a tutorial session today. So I will cover tutorial starting from chapter two. We do not have any tutorial for chapter one because chapter one is uh, mostly explanation and the derivation of the equation. So we don't have tutorial for chapter one. We will straight away go to tutorial question chapter two. So if you are looking for the question, the question is already in the VLE as well as in the teams folder and in the questions already actually included the final answer as well in the question so uh, you can actually attempt it uh, by yourself uh, later on and even if you attempt it later on uh, you still have the final answer for the comparisons of uh, to know that whether you're doing it correctly or not Okay, so I will, I will start uh, for the questions for this morning right so I will usually uh, I will read out the questions and then I will explain uh, the steps okay and then I will give you a little bit of time maybe uh, one or two minutes uh, for you to do the calculation if you have the paper and the pen with you and then I will proceed to the next question okay so for the first question for this morning we have an equal molar of gas mixture A and B. Okay, so <clears throat> it's very important in engineering questions is basically understanding the question first. Okay, so most of the time, uh, students are not able to solve the questions are uh, mostly because unable to actually understand the question in the beginning. So it's very important for you to understand the question. So in the first part, this says equal molar of gas mixture A and B. So what, what does this mean? Meaning, uh, initially in the reactions, in the reactor, we have uh, two reactants. Okay, so... Uh, what, how do I know it's two reactors? Because they say uh, equal molar of gas mixture A and B enter the reactor. So you know when it enters the reactor, it must be, uh, it, it is the reactant. Okay, so first, second, you know there's two reactants, reactant A and B. Okay, third, they say it's a gas mixture. So there's a few information that you need to understand. First, uh, it's entered the reactor. Second, it consists of two reactants, A and B. Third, it is gas phase. Both are in gas phase. And fourth, it says equal molar. Okay, equal molar means they are entering the reactor in equal molarity. Or molarity, we can also say concentration. So we do not know what is this concentration. It can be uh, one molar to one molar, two molar to two molar, three molar to three molar. We don't actually know the actual concentration, but we do know they are equal in concentration. So this information actually tell us we can actually know the molar percentage of these two compounds initially. Okay, if you have equal molarity, okay, for example, let's say I put it as uh, we assume one molar, one molar. So in terms of percentage, it will be 50% A, 50% B. This percentage is in terms of mole, mole percent, meaning initially the mole percent of A is 50%, the molar percent of B is also 50%. Okay, but you know, right, in calculation, we will... <coughs> In calculation, we will use uh, in terms of fraction, not in terms of percentage. Okay, so uh, in terms of fraction, it will be mole fraction of A initially 0.5. Mole fraction of B initially is also 0 0.5. Okay, 50%, 50%. So mole fraction here, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So that's the first uh uh, the first thing that you can deduce from the very first sentence. Okay, next they say enters the reactor at 250 dm3 per second. So when you see the number and the unit, it's important for you to know as well what does that mean. Okay, so from the unit, you know the unit dm3 is volume, second is time. So volume per time is volumetric flow rate. But you do understand that volumetric flow rate, they has initial and final volumetric flow rate. Okay, so about volumetric flow rate, the initial, you have also volumetric flow rate at, at the final volumetric flow rate. So since this is enter the reactor, so this is initial volumetric flow rate. 
So it's epsilon not 250. Okay, so so far we have few information. Mole fraction, initial mole fraction. A equals to initial mole fraction of B equals to 0 0.5. Second, we know the epsilon naught as 250 dm3 per second. Next, temperature 125 Celsius. Celsius you already know lah, it's definitely temperature. So similar concept. Temperature in the reaction also, we have initial temperature and final temperature because if you learn before in chemistry, reaction pun kita, we have endothermic, exothermic reaction, meaning during the reaction, they may be heat release or heat absorbed to the reaction. So when you have this, Naturally, the temperature also will change, meaning initial temperature, final temperature is not necessarily the same. Except if they say it is an isothermal reaction. Kalau isothermal reaction, iso means same, thermal means temperature. If the reaction is high, isothermal reaction, someone might is not muted. Can you please check? All right, thank you. Okay, so if it's isothermal reaction, okay, then the temperature is the same. Means there are no changes in the temperature. If it's non-isothermal, then they, they can be temperature change. So what is this indicator? Meaning even the T also you have to indicate T naught, which is initial temperature, or T, final temperature. So in this case, since the cutter enters the reactor, so this is T naught. Okay, naught is to indicate at time zero or at the time before the reaction taking place. Okay, so done. We got epsilon naught, we got T naught. Okay, they say calculate the initial concentration and initial molar flow rate of A. So what do they want to find? They want to find initial concentration of A. So you know concentration, the symbol is C. Then you know concentration, it must be specific to the compound. Since they say this is for compound A, C subscript A. Then don't forget concentration point, you have initial and final concentration. Since they say initial concentration of A, so they want us to find C A naught. First, one. Second, they want us to find initial molar flow rate of A. So, kalau molar flow rate, we use F. Uh, molar flow rate of A, F subscript A. Initial molar flow rate of A, F A naught. So, the question wants us to find C A naught. The question wants to us to find uh, F A naught. Okay, two. The two things that we need to find. So, let us go to part A of the question. The part A of the question says... If, okay, find CA0 and FA0 if the initial partial pressure of A is 250 kilopascal. So, they want us to find initial concentration of A and initial molar flow rate of A, CA0 and FA0 if the partial pressure, the initial partial pressure of A is 250 kilopascal. Okay. So how do we solve this question, right? So first of all, what is this 250 kilopascal? This 250 kilopascal is the pressure that is owned by A or the pressure of A initially in the reactor. So pressure, we use P. For compound A, we use A, subscript A. So P subscript A. And since this is initial partial pressure, we got not. So what 250 is actually PA naught. Okay, so PA naught is 250 kilopascal. Okay, so how do we find the initial concentration? Okay, so if you remember previously, I taught you in chapter 2, this is chapter 2, okay, uh, for gas phase, only and only gas phase, there is an equation that can be used to find the initial concentration. So why, why we say it's only for gas phase? Because this equation is based on the ideal gas law. So that's why if the equation is based on ideal gas law, that means the law is only applicable for cases of which it is gas phase. So if you have liquid phase, you can no longer use this equation because this law or this equation only and only applicable to gas phase. So if you remember, the equation is given as CA0 
equals to PA naught per RT naught. Okay, konsep dia, I want to find concentration of A initially is equal to the initial partial pressure of A divided with R, gas constant, multiply with the initial temperature, T naught. Okay, so straightforward, this is not that difficult. P A naught we know is 250 kilopascal as given in the equation. I make it bigger, this is a bit too small. Okay, so you know P A naught is given as 250 kilopascal, right? Next, gas constant. So gas constant... Alright, this is also a question that sometimes students will get confused because as you know, we have different combinations of gas constant value because it depends on the unit. So if you Google, well, you realize there's a lot of R value, you know, because it depends on what unit that you want to use. So let's say you want to use for ATM, ATM per liter, Kelvin, so on and so forth. They're the combination yang berlainan. Okay, but always students will ask, how do we know which uh, R that uh, we can use to solve the question? So for me personally, dia tak ada salah atau betul because whatever unit that you use, whatever R value you use pun okay because at the end, as long as you can do the unit conversion, the answer will still be the same. But to shorten the step or to save your time, in my opinion, usually I will choose my R value based on the R value punya pressure unit. I will see the pressure unit of my R value and I will choose the one that is consistent with my pressure unit in the question. So for example, in this question, they give the pressure as 250 kilopascal. So I will find the R that has kilopascal. So that one is actually 8.3144 kilopascal dm cube per mole Kelvin. So why I do this is because I want to automatically cancel my uh, uh, pressure unit straight away. So you can see I can already cancel my pressure unit, my kilopascal directly this way. Sorry, I can directly cancel my kilopascal unit. Done. Okay. Next. I have to multiply with T naught, initial temperature. Okay, this part you have to be careful because you realize our gas constant, the unit of temperature is Kelvin. So naturally, the unit of our temperature in the calculation, we have to convert to Kelvin immediately. Ataupun we have to convert the temperature to Kelvin. So because the temperature given to us was 125 Celsius. Okay, so this 125 Celsius, I will convert to Kelvin. So if you remember conversion factor for temperature from Celsius to Kelvin is very easy. You just plus 273.15. Okay, again, to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, if you check conversion table, it's just by adding 273.15. So by doing this, I can now cancel the Kelvin unit as well. For my, R value, for my gas constant, R value Kelvin, I can cancel with my temperature T0 unit already. So I, I cancel my pressure unit, I cancel my temperature unit. You realize that the unit now that is left is actually dm cube per mole at the bottom. Okay. So when you calculated this, make sure you do this properly, you will get your final answer 0 0.076. But what about the unit? So don't forget, sometimes part ni pun kadang-kadang mathematics, you might forget when you have three layers of variable. Macam case ni kalau kamu perasa dia adalah one per B per C. So when you have one per B per C, the third layer of the unknown will go to the top. So one per B per C will become C per B. Sebab tu you realize the unit mole now goes to the top. The unit dm cube is at the second layer. Yang ketiga tu naik ke atas sebenarnya. So you get finally the final unit mole per dm cube. So I always tell you right, uh, in a way for you to check your calculation, tengok unit. If your unit is mole per dm cube, mole per volume, which is actually concentration, and it is indeed true, you want to find concentration, most likely your answer is correct. Okay, so most likely kalau unit tu consistent with the dimension of what you want to find, most likely the formula that you use is correct. 
Okay. So next part, they want us to find F A naught, the initial molar flow rate of A. So to find the initial molar flow rate of A, there's only one correlation. Okay, remember I taught you, kalau gas phase, uh, kalau flow system, the correlation ada for concentration, molar flow rate, volumetric flow rate. The correlation is given as F A naught equals to C A naught multiplied by V naught. Okay. Even if, let's say, you, you know these three are correlated, molar flow rate, uh, concentration, volumetric flow rate are correlated to one another. Let's say you, you forget, dia multiply ke, divide ke, so on and so forth. Like I told you, just do unit cancellation. Kalau kamu can, katakanlah, you, you are not sure, you try first to multiply. If you see the unit cancellation, you can cancel the unit. You get the correct dimension that you want. Most likely, you are correct. So, for example, in this case, I put it as F A naught equals to C A naught multiplied with epsilon naught. Okay, means uh, initial molar flow rate of A equals to initial concentration of A multiplied with initial volumetric flow rate. Okay, so let's say we multiply. Huh? So, initial concentration we get from part uh, the above part as 0 0.076 mole per dm cube. We multiply with the initial volumetric flow rate 250 dm cube per second. So you multiply. You can see that I can cancel the volumetric flow rate unit. Uh, sorry, not volumetric flow rate unit. I can cancel the volume unit. You can see that I can cancel my dm cube. I can cancel with another dm cube. I'm left with mole per second. So again, I want to find molar flow rate. Mole per second, mole per time. It is indeed molar flow rate. So very likely your, your calculation is correct. So you get the final answer as 19 mole per second. So done for part A. I will go to part B. Then I will give you one or two minutes to uh, solve the equation. Okay, I will go to part B first. So part B, they say, the uh, they ask us to calculate again CA0 and uh, FA0. But in case B, they tell us the initial total pressure of the system is 1,500 kilopascal. So what's the difference part A and part B? Part A, they give us the pressure of A, initial partial pressure of A. Means yang 252 is the pressure that is from A and only A. In part B, they tell us the initial total pressure of the system is now 1,500 kilopascal. So this 1,500 kilopascal is the pressure that comes from A and B. So you don't forget this part. Pressure, kalau dia kata total pressure, maksudnya kita kan ada dua compound, A and B. So the total pressure of both this compound is 1,500. So in the calculation, we want to find concentration of A. We cannot use this 1,005. Sebab 1,005 ni ada juga terkandung pressure of B. If I want to calculate concentration of A, there mesti only and only pressure that comes from A. So how do we solve this? Okay, that's why... We learned before, and you learn this in CPP and you learn in other courses, we can use the correlation of Raup's law. Okay, so uh, how do we use this correlation? Because Raup's law mentioned, kalau nak tahu pressure E, okay, katakan nak tahu pressure, let's say in our case, we want to know the pressure of E, is equal to the mole fraction of E multiplied with the total pressure. Okay, so you got PA0 will equal to Y A naught multiply with P naught. Y A naught ni adalah mole fraction A initially. Okay, so dalam soalan kan, they say equal molar. Tadi kan dia kata equal molar initially. Means 50% mole A, 50% mole B. Okay, so kalau kita ada 1,500 ni, actually, this 1,500 is consists of 50% A, 50% B. So, by right, the pressure of A is 750 Pressure of B is also 750 kilopascal. Okay, so that's why in the equation it becomes uh, CA0 now equals to YA0 multiplied with P0. Okay, so about YA0 multiplied dengan P0 is actually equals to PA0. Mole fraction A darab dengan total pressure adalah sama dengan pressure E. 
So that's why you do y a not 0 0.5. If you are confused, y is to use to signify mole fraction. A to signify compound A, not to signify initial mole fraction of compound A. So 0 0.5, 50%, dalam bentuk fraction 0 0.5, multiply with the pressure, 1,500 kilopascal, the total pressure. So uh, I hope you know or you remember, kalau fraction dia tak ada unit, dimensionless. Sebab tu 0 0.5 tu tak ada unit, tak ada dimension. Okay, multiply with 1,500 kilo, 1, kilopascal, Divided by similar concept, R value. So since my pressure is in kilopascal, I will also use the R value with the kilopascal unit. So 8.3144 kilopascal dm cubed per mole Kelvin. So by doing this, I can already cancel my kilopascal unit. Next step, multiply with T0. The temperature is still the same, 125 Celsius. But since my R value, the temperature unit is Kelvin. So I straight away convert my temperature from Celsius to Kelvin. So from 125 to convert to Kelvin, you just add 273.15. That's the conversion factor. So now I can cancel kilopascal. I can cancel my Kelvin. I'm left with one small mole per dm cube, which is my concentration unit. So you calculate the number, you will get 0 0.2266 mole per dm cube. Subsequently, to find FA0, that's straightforward. FA0 is still the same. CA0 multiplied with V0, but of course, don't forget my CA0 dah berubah because my new CA0 is 0 0.2266. So I multiply 0 0.2266 mole per dm cube, multiply with my initial volumetric flow rate, which is again the same, 250 dm cube per second. Okay, again, if I do unit cancellation, I can cancel my dm cube. I'm left with mole per time, mole per second, which is molar flow rate. So most likely your answer is correct. So let's say katakan kamu confused. FA0 ni sama dengan CA0 multiply V0 ke, CA0 bahagi dengan V0 ke, let's say you are confused, you just do the unit cancellation. If your final unit is not consistent with what you want to find, then you have to recheck because that, that means indicate that you are doing the wrong calculation. Okay, so I'm done for question one. So I will give you about one to two minute break. Okay, not break. I will give you two minutes to try to solve this by yourself. If you have a pen or paper, I'll with you. I will come back in two minutes time. Okay, so done for question number one. Okay, I will continue to question number two. For those yang tak sempat, it's okay because as I told you, uh, the final answer is already available in the question as well. Okay, so just maybe uh, if you miss out, later just watch the video a little bit. Okay, then you can do it by yourself. But I really advise you guys, jangan setakat tengok video and then <coughs> hope, uh, jangan setakat tengok video and think that you can do it 
uh, later ataupun maksudnya tengok video tapi tak buat sendiri you didn't do it you by yourself and then you wait until test baru nak buat please don't try please don't i would not recommend to do this because uh, reaction ni memang actually you really need to uh, do the calculation by yourself of course you can watch the video and to refer why you're doing it but you have to really understand question tutorial takkan keluar sebiji dalam test atau exam. You can ask your seniors. I will not come up directly the question from tutorial to the exam and test. But if you understand the questions, you can do definitely the question in the test or exam. Okay, so that's the part you have to understand. Kamu kena betul-betul faham soalan sebab I will change a part parts of the question but if you really understand that is not a problem tapi if you don't really understand the question uh, you just do it by looking at the video it might cause you a little bit problem later when you attempt the question in the test or exam so for reaction actually the key is understanding information then only you can do the questions correctly okay so let us go to the second question the second question says a mixture of 30 mol percent SO2 and the balanced air is charged to a flow reactor in which SO2 is oxidized to form SO3 at an initial rate of 10 mol per second of O2. Okay, so you see from the very first question, you have a few information you need to digest. So first information, dia kata, initially, Sebab dia kata charge to a flow reactor. Initially yang masuk dalam reactor tu consists of 30 mol percent SO2 dan balance dia air. Okay, so maksudnya, alright, so you see the question, the chemical reaction is between oxygen gas and SO2. So SO2 punya mol percent is 30 percent. Okay, and the remainder percent, 70 percent is air. So, kenapa dia guna air walaupun our reaction is with oxygen gas but they do not pump in pure oxygen gas. Instead, they pump in air because air contains oxygen as well. So, air contains a uh, certain portion of oxygen and certain portion of nitrogen and carbon dioxide sebenarnya. So, instead of using pure oxygen, they are, the question says they are using air. But bear in mind, walaupun kita guna air, tetapi but the gas that is reacting in the reaction is only oxygen gas. So, yang 30% SO2, the remainder 70% is air, not oxygen gas. Okay, next. They kata oxidize to form SO3 at the initial rate of 10 mol per second of O2. So, what is this 10 mol per second? So, first, they kata mol per second, mol per time. So, mol per time, molar flow rate. Okay, next, they kata initial. So, this is initial molar flow rate. Then, they kata oxygen gas. So, this is initial molar flow rate of oxygen gas. But normally, kita akan calculate dalam bentuk ABC, right? We always calculate ah, FA0, CA0, so on and so forth. So, how do we know which is A, B, C and D? Satu U, normally, bukan normally, our A is always the limiting reactant. Okay, if they do not state which one is limiting reactant, because we have two reactant, SO2 and O2. If the question did not state which is the limiting reactant, you can and may assume the first compound in your chemical equation as your A. So, maksudnya oksigen gas ni adalah A kamu, SO2 is your B, SO3 is your C. So, therefore, this 10 mol per second of O2 is actually your FA0. Okay, sebab oksigen gas adalah A kita, so it become FA0 equals to 10 mol per second. Okay, so now they says, the question says, Again, given the total initial pressure of the system as 15 atm. So again, they kata initially total pressure system saya 15 atm. So this 15 atm is the pressure from SO2 as well as air. Okay, so 15 atm ni adalah tekanan udara dan juga tekanan SO2. 
which we don't know how much, but we know the total pressure, 15. Okay. And they kata temperature 230 Celsius. So 15 atm ni adalah P not initial total pressure. Okay. T not 230 Celsius. So P not 15 atm. T not 230 Celsius. Dan dan dia kata sekarang air contains 79 mol percent nitrogen gas and the balance oxygen gas. So remember just now. Kita ada 30% SO2, kita ada 70% air. So dalam 70% air ini, okay, ada 79% N2, M bagi 21% O2. So kalau baikkan dalam 70% ni, dalam 70% air ni, dia punya composition dia pula terbahagi kepada dua, which is 79 mol persen N2, 21 mol persen O2. Yang 21 mol persen ni lah sebenarnya yang digunakan untuk the reaction. Okay, what about nitrogen? So in this case, okay, nitrogen is also known as an inert. Means dia takkan, walaupun dia ada dalam sistem, Okay, dia ada pressure dalam sistem but they will not be involved in the reaction. So that's why a lot of uh, reaction that uses oxygen, dia akan guna air. Sebab air tu ada oxygen, ada nitrogen, a large amount of nitrogen but this large amount of nitrogen will not be involved in the reaction. They have traces amount of carbon dioxide, I think it's about 0.03, very trace amount so they would not really affect the reaction. Okay, done. Right, so now they say the question. Calculate the initial concentration and initial volumetric flow rate of oxygen gas. Okay, dia nak tahu Ca0, O2 is our C, uh, O2 is our A, right? So, dia nak tahu Ca0 dan epsilon naught. Okay, so they want to find Ca0 and epsilon naught. Okay, so again, same concept. Kalau kita nak cari concentration, initial concentration and they say it is gas phase, Directly, you know that you need to use the ideal gas law punya equation. Asalkan dia gas phase, nak cari concentration, you can straight away uh, remember that we will use the uh, equation, the ideal gas law equation, which state Ca0 equals to, so, since dia beri kita initial total pressure, which is P0, don't forget you have to multiply with Ya0. So, become Ca0 equals to Ya0 P0 per RT0. So yang pengatas ni kamu just ingat je. Kalau dia beri kita terus tekanan A, initial pressure of A, dia jadi PA0. Kalau dia beri kita total pressure initial, P0 tu kita kena darab dengan YA0. YA0, P0 sebenarnya sama dengan PA0. Kalau dia beri PA0, terus guna. Kalau dia beri P0, multiply with YA0. That's the only thing that you have to understand. So kalau ada soalan, make sure you check. Is that PA0 or is that P0? Kalau P0, mesti darab dengan YA0. Kalau diberi terus PA0, terus ganti je. Tak ada masalah. Okay. Then, pembawa dia is always the same divided by RT0. Okay. Now, the top part yang menjadi masalah. What do you mean by the problem? How do we know the initial mole fraction of A? in the system ataupun how do we know berapa sebenarnya persen oxygen gas initially okey this ni yang tak straightforward it's not so straightforward sebab persoalan dia initial saya ada 30% SO2 70% air dalam 70% air ini ada lagi terbahagi kepada 79% N2 21% O2 kamu kena ingat yang 79, 21 ni adalah persentase dalam 70 itu. Dia tak mewakili persentase keseluruhan for the whole system that also include the SO2. So bila kita nak kira mole fraction oxygen gas which is why a not, kita kena kira berapa fraction dia terhadap keseluruhan sistem which include the SO2. So how do we calculate this? Okay, so first of all you know Uh, SO2 punya mole fraction 0.3, 30%. Therefore, air punya mole fraction 7, uh, 0.7, 70%. Hence, how much is my mole fraction of oxygen gas, which is my Y A0, dia akan sama dengan in my 70% air, I have 21% O2. 
So saya daratkan saja dari dalam 70% air saya, saya ada 21% oksigen gas. So I multiply this two, I will get 0.147. Apa maksud 0.147? Maksudnya dalam keseluruhan gas saya yang ada SO2, ada O2, ada M2, tiga-tiga gas ni sebenarnya, oksigen saya sebenarnya hanya mewakili 14.7% or fraction 0.147. Okay, tu sebenarnya masuk dia. Kamu tak, kamu, you cannot take directly the 0.21. Kenapa tak ambil yang 0.21? Sebab 0.21 tu, 21% tu, hanya yang dia ambil kira yang terangkum dalam udara sahaja. Tapi kalau kita nak tahu keseluruhan dalam sistem, kita kena, kita kena ambil kira juga yang termasuk dengan SO2. Sebab tu kita akan kira dalam 70% air ada 21% O2. That's so why you multiply this two, you will get the mole fraction of oxygen in the overall system as 0.147. So just multiply 0.147 with 15 atm, the initial total pressure, you divide with, again, not our gas constant value. So in this question, our gas const, our, vol, our pressure unit is ATM. So I will find the gas constant value of R with the ATM unit. So happen, kalau kamu check, the only R with ATM unit is actually 0.082 ATM, DM cube per mole Kelvin. So by using this R value, dah berlainan kan? Tadi kita guna 8.3144 kilopascal dm cube per mole Kelvin. When it's ATM, it becomes 0.082 ATM dm cube per mole Kelvin. So by doing this, I can already cancel my ATM unit. Okay, so let's say lah dalam kamu terfikir, ter katakan saya nak guna 8.3144 kilopascal dm cube per mole Kelvin. Boleh je, but you have to add one more step to convert the uh, to convert the atm to kilopascal that's why we do that final answer masih sama tapi kamu tambah satu kerja lah sebab kamu kena convert kalau kamu tak convert the dm uh, the k the kilopascal to atm your final answer will be wrong if you convert your final answer will be the same but you will add a few minutes of calculation dah kalau kamu terpaksa convert lagi sebab tu pilih r value look at the pressure unit Choose the R value with the same pressure unit. You save already one step technically. Okay, then multiply with T naught. So again, nak multiply dengan T naught. Tengok unit R temperature in the R value. So in the R value, unit temperature dia Kelvin. So naturally, I convert straight away my temperature from Celsius to Kelvin. They give the cell temperature initially was 230 Celsius. So I just Plus 273.15, I've already converted it to Kelvin. So Kelvin punya penukaran senang je, tambah je 273.15. Then straight away, you can do the calculation. You can see that lastly, my unit still in uh, in the form of mole per dm cube, mole per volume, concentration, which is what I want to find. So the final answer will be 0 0.053 mole per dm cube. Okay, so this question is not that difficult, just that part yang nak tahu mole fraction oxygen itu can be a problem if you don't understand the concept of ada ada air, dalam air ada percentage lagi, tapi kena kira dalam percentage dalam uh, the context of the entire system punya mole fraction. Okay, done. So next part, they want us to find epsilon naught, initial volumetric flow rate. So part ni pun kamu dah ingatkan tadi kita dah solve, kita cari FA0 kalau diberi CA0 dan V0. Soalan ni kita tahu FA0, kita dah cari CA0, we want to find uh, epsilon naught. So kalau kamu, dia, if you remember, kalau kamu ingat, dia terbalik je lah formula dia kan. So formula dia become uh, epsilon naught equals to FA0 divided by CA0. Kalau kamu confused tengok, originally kan macam ni, FA0 equals to CA0 multiply with V0. So if I want to find, sorry, epsilon naught. So kalau nak cari epsilon naught sama dengan FA naught divided saja dengan CA naught. 
So let's say you again, you forget if you not bagi si not ke, si not bagi if you not ke, si not multiply if you not ke, just do unit cancellation, the easiest one for you to know. So when you do the unit cancellation, you can see I can cancel the unit of mole. I can cancel the unit of mole, then my dm cube goes to the top. I will get dm cube per second. dm cube is volume, second is time, volume per time, volumetric flow rate. So most likely, jawapan kamu betul lah. So you get the answer 188.68. Okay, so uh, that's all for question. Uh, oh, there's one more question for part B. Uh, question for sec question second, part B. So they say, calculate the conversion of oxygen gas if given the outlet flow rate as 5.55 mole per second. So they want us to find conversion, but they want the conversion in the form of percentage. Okay, and they beri kita outlet flow rate 5.55 mole per second. So again, mole per second, mole per time, molar flow rate. They kata outlet molar flow rate. So they beri kita Fa. So kita tadi dah tahu Fa not kan dalam soalan Fa not given as 10 mole per second. Tu initial molar flow rate. Part B ditambah lagi, dia beri kita outlet molar flow rate. Kita tahu FA0, kita tahu FA. So, we can directly find the conversion lah, straightforward. Conversion equals to in minus out divided by in. Inlet molar flow rate, FA0 minus dengan outlet molar flow rate, FA. Divide again with the inlet molar flow rate, FA0. So, 10 minus 5.55 divided by 10 again. And since they want in percent, you have to multiply with 100%. Dalam penyiraan, kalau kita tak multiply dengan 100%, dia menjadi fraction. Dia nak dalam percentage, darab sajalah dengan 100%, you get in terms of percent. So, when you calculate correctly, you will get in terms of percent, 44.5%. So, done for question number 2. So, again... This not so difficult. Hold on, uh, let I don't think it's that difficult. But again, uh, the understanding on the mole fraction is very important in order for you to solve. So, katakan, you're not sure about the mole fraction. Okay, kamu kira why it not to salah. Memang the entire question will be wrong. So, be very careful about this matter. Okay, so I give you again as usual. Two minutes uh, of a break for you to attempt the question. If you have it in front of you, I will come back in two minutes time.
Okay, all right. So done question one, question two. We will proceed to the next question. So next question ni uh, on the design of the reactor. So question one, question two is just introductory. Now we go to the question that uh, touches on the Lewenspear plot ataupun dengan table yang kita dah belajar how to find to find the volume. Okay, the question says the gas phase reaction which I uh, saya nak tukar kepada besar. Okay, the gas phase reaction is given as follows. Okay, using the level sphere plot for the reaction. So, this is the level sphere plot. Determine the inlet molar flow rate of a single 30 dm cube single PFR and a 30 dm cube single CSTR to achieve final conversion of 20%. Okay, so soalan ini senang je. Dia beri kita Lewenspear plot. So don't forget, Lewenspear plot dia punya karakteristik yang paling penting. Y axis dia is 1 per minus RA. X axis dia adalah X. Okay, so 1 per minus RA versus X. Okay, dia kata lagi, dia suruh kita cari inlet molar flow rate. Dia nak kita cari FA0. Okay, kalau dia beri, volume reactor kita adalah 30 dm cube 1 pfr or 30 dm cube 1 cstr so i have 1 pfr 30 dm cube 1 cstr 30 dm cube then dia beri kita conversion 20% means my x is 0 0.2 so dia beri kita x 0 0.2 Volume CSTR 30, volume PFR 30, dia nak kita cari FA0 untuk PFR dan juga FA0 untuk CSTR. So, how do we do this? Okay, so kalau you remember, okay, kita cari one by one. Kita kena cari FA0 untuk PFR, kita kena cari uh, FA0 untuk CSTR. You have to remember, the actor berlainan, design equation berlainan, FA0 definitely will be different already. Okay, so we start first with PFR to find the FA0. Okay, so hopefully you still remember, yesterday we teach, uh, we learned this a little bit already. Volume PFR equals to FA0, that's the equation, integrating from 0 to 0 0.2. Kenapa? One single PFR, they are converting from 0 to uh, 20%, 0 0.2. Sebab tu jadi 0 to 0 0.2 dx per minus Ra. So then you remember this part, we have to solve in the form of uh, Simpson one third rule. So it become Fa0 delta x per 3 in bracket 3 points. So 1 per minus Ra when my x is 0 because my bottom, my lower limit is x saya adalah 0. So 1 per minus Ra when my x is 0 plus 4 per minus Ra at my middle conversion. So my initial conversion was 0, my final conversion 0 0.2, my middle conversion will be 0 0.1. That's why it become 4 per minus Ra when my x is 0 0.1 plus 1 per minus RA at my final x which is 0 0.2. Sebab tu titik last is 1 per minus RA when my x 0 0.2. So done. Okay, so then we solve the question. Okay, uh, then you see from the, to get the 1 per minus RA, you have to look from the level sphere plot. Okay, kena jadi macam besar sangat. To find the 1 per minus Ra, you have to find from the level sphere plot. Means, when my x is 0, 1 per minus Ra is 4 point, uh, sorry, 2.22. 2.22. Next, when my x is 0 0.1, my 1 per minus Ra, 2.7. Next, when my x is 0 0.2, 1 per minus RA is 3.33. So you look from the plot, uh, look from the plot, you get the value. You just substitute inside. So volume PFR 30, kejap, dia macam kejap, 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 kejap. So volume of my PFR 30 dm cube, okay, given in the question. We want to find FA0. FA0 ialah apa yang kita nak cari. So FA0, we leave it as it is. Kamu kena ingatkan dalam equation I taught you, in mathematic equation, if you have one equation, you 
only can solve it if you only have one unknown. Kalau kamu ada lebih daripada satu unknown dalam soalan, in the equation, the equation can never be solved. One equation, one unknown, you can solve. One equation, more than one unknown, you can never solve. So, means other part of the equation, semua kamu dah kena tahu nilai dia. So, I already know V, dah tahu volume. F A not, I want to find. So, F A not, I leave it. Uh, delta X per 3. So, delta X per 3, as I told you, right? Delta X is the gap or the difference between initial X to the middle X or the middle X to the final X. So, my initial X was 0. My middle X was 0 0.1. So, the difference is 0 0.1. Or at the back, my middle X 0 0.1. My final X 0 0.2. The difference is still 0 0.1. So, delta X 0 0.1 divided by 3. Formula dia kata mesti divide dengan 3. So, we divide by 3. In the bracket, substitute in the value. When my X is 0, 1 per minus RA 2.22. So, replace 2.22. Straight away, ganti nombor sebab 2.22 tu adalah 1 per minus RA apabila X saya kosong. Plus 4. Don't forget ada 4. So, 4 multiply with 1 per minus RA when my X 0 0.1 from the, from the plot. When my X 0 0.1, 1 per minus RA saya adalah 2.7. So, 4 multiply with 2.7 plus 1 per minus RA when my X 0 0.2. So, when my X 0 0.2, 1 per minus RA dia adalah 3.33. So, you replace into the equation. Alright. You solve it because now you are you are left with only F A naught. Okay. So, kalau kamu nak buat pembatalan unit pun boleh. You realize you can cancel your dm cube unit. You are left with mole per second. So, of course lah. Mole per second, mole per time, molar flow rate. So, you calculate this correctly, you get your FA naught 55.05 mole per second, which is initial molar flow rate of A for the PFR. Okay, so soalan ni sebenarnya tak susah. Kita pun dah pernah bincang dalam kelas. Tapi part yang don't make mistake, yang kalau guna plot, nilai tu adalah 1 per minus RA. So, kamu straight away guna nilai tu. Jangan bahagi dah. So, macam kali, macam kalau kalau student confused bila guna plot, bila guna table. Kalau table, nilai dia minus RE. Kalau plot, 1 per minus RE. So, don't forget and confuse that part. Okay, so next question, CSTR. CSTR lagi senang because the equation is so much easier. So, for CSTR, design equation dia, kamu kena ingat, dia start dengan design equation dia. So, design equation dia, volume CSTR equals to FA0. Multiply with X, divide dengan minus RA at your X that you want to find. Okay, so dalam soalan ni, volume CSTR dia dah diberi 30, same volume as the PFR, 30 dm cube. Uh, FA not, I want to find. So again, FA not is what we want to find. So means the rest tu kita kena tahu dah nilai dia. So next, X, uh, the desired conversion was 0.2 kan? The final conversion dia nak adalah 20%, 0.2. So X, 0.2. Then, the minus RA adalah apabila X saya 0.2. So, when my X is 0.2, if you see from the curve, when my X 0.2, 1 per minus RA is 3.33. So, what you do, you straight away multiply with 3.33. Sebab dia adalah 1 per minus RA apabila X saya 0.2, which is 3.33. So, you multiply with 3.33. Okay, you are left with only one unknown FA0. You can solve this, you will get your FA0 as 45.05 mol per second. So, this question pun sebenarnya tak susah tetapi you have to understand part yang kamu kena multiply, don't divide. Kalau table tu minus RA, kamu kena bahagi. Kalau plot is 1 per minus RA, you straight away multiply with the value. Then don't forget, you solve it correctly. You get your FA0 answer. So you have two different FA0. FA0 untuk CSTR, FA0 to PFR. It will be different because they are different reactor and they use different equation. So done for question number three. So again... Uh, one or two minutes for you to do if you are doing it, then I will come back in one to two minutes time.
Okay, alright. So, we are done for question number three. Okay, uh, we start with a quite easy one. We will go to the next question, question number four. Okay, so question number four ni, that a little bit uh, difficult. Okay, so this is question number four. 3.5 mole per dm cube. Kejap eh, saya besarkan balik. 3.5 mole per dm cube of pure A answers the reactor at the rate of 10 dm cube per second. Okay, at this part, kamu kena betul-betul be careful with the value that is given. Kamu kena betul-betul check value tu di give, given tu sebenarnya apa. Sebab yeah. kalau part ni kamu dah buat salah, basically the entire thing calculation dah salah. Okay, first baca. Dia kata, mole per dm cube. So, kamu ingat, mole per dm cube dah mention dia mole per volume. So, mole per volume is concentration. So, dia kata concentration. Dia kata A. So, it's concentration of A. Then, dia kata enters the reactor. So, this is initial concentration of A. So, this is CA0. So, CA0, 3.5. So, let's say part ni kamu tersalah. Kamu ingatkan 3.5 ni adalah FA0. If you put it as FA0, the entire calculation semua dah salah. Means, at the very first step, kamu dah salah identify, kamu ingatkan tu FA0, tapi sebenarnya adalah CA0. The entire question is zero ready for you. So, make sure you cannot, cannot, cannot do this mistake. Tengok unit, kena pasti dulu apakah nilai itu. Okay, so this part, this is CA0. Next one, rate of 10 dm cube per second. So again, dm cube per second dimension dia volume per time. So kamu tahu volume per time, volumetric flow rate. So dikata this one initial, enters the reactor kan. So V0, 10 dm cube per second. Absolut, saya kena saya guna V0 dan absolut sama eh, tu volumetric flow rate eh. V0, 10 dm cube per second. So same concept, katakan kamu ingat 10, di, 10 ni adalah Fa0. Whole question salah juga. Atau kamu ingat 10 ni adalah CA0. Whole question salah juga. So, you cannot, cannot, cannot do this mistake. Check unit, tengok dimension. Kena pasti betul-betul. Okay, so done. Okay, so kita tahu CA0, 3.5. Uh, V0, 10. Okay, next dia kata, using the data here, calculate reactor volume. So, data dia beri sekarang dalam bentuk table. Tadi dalam bentuk plot, now is in the form of table. So, in the table, dia beri kita X and minus RA. So, kalau plot, 1 per minus RA, X. This one, minus RA and X. Okay, so, tu beza dia. Right, so, let us go to the very first question. Uh, this one, kita cari volume, volume reactor. Uh, single CSTR, conversion 80%. So, dia nak kita cari volume CSTR. Tadi kita disuruh kita cari FA0 bila dia beri volume. Soalan ni disuruh kita cari terus volume. So, kalau kamu tak pasti nak start daripada mana, you can always start from the design equation first. Kamu tahu design equation dia, volume CSTR equals to FA0 X per minus RA. So, minus RA tu pada X yang kamu nak cari. Okay, so kamu nak tahu kan kalau kita nak cari volume, on the left hand side is our unknown yang we want to find. So the right hand side, all the three unknown, FA0, X, minus RA, kamu kena cari nilai dia. Kalau tak dapat ketiga-tiga nilai ni, kamu takkan dapat volume CSTR. So first of all, FA0. So kamu perasan FA0, FA0 adalah molar flow rate. Dia mesti unit dia, mesti dimension dia mesti mole per time. So kalau kamu check dalam soalan, Tak ada sebarang nilai yang memberikan kita dimension mole per time. Sebab yang pertama, mole per volume. Yang kedua, volume per masa. Tapi kita tahu molar flow rate, dia mesti mole per time. So selagi kamu tak dapat FA0 yang ada dimension mole per time, you cannot solve this. Kamu tahu mesti jawapan kamu salah. So that's a way for you to already know. Kalau saya tak ada FA0 yang ada unit mole per time, mole per second ke, mole per hour ke, mole per day ke, selagi tak ada unit ni dalam nilai saya, saya tak boleh buat. Salah. Okay. So then maybe you remember, tapi dia beri kita CA0 dan V0. So there is a correlation between FA0, CA0 and V0 because FA0 is equal to CA0 multiply with V0. So you multiply your CA0, 3.5 mole per dm cube. You multiply with your volumetric flow rate, uh, 10 dm cube per second. 
Okay, if you multiply correctly, you can see that I can cancel once more my unit of my volume. DM cube, DM cube tu, kamu tahu kan kalau matematik atas bawah, kita boleh cancel. We are left with mole per second. So, betul lah, mole per second, mole per time. So, you get already your FA0 first. So, FA0 is 35 mole per second. So, kalau kamu tengok soalan jenis soalan ni, dia tak suruh pun kamu cari FA0 sebenarnya. Tapi, kamu tahu dalam formula, dalam equation saya tu, in the equation, I have FA0. So, in order for me to solve it, I have to first find FA0. So, that's part that you have to really understand dalam engineering question, especially now you're in semester yang dah advanced semester, dia takkan soalan dah takkan straightforward kata, okay, cari FA0. Takkan. But you have to know by yourself, nak solve this, saya tak cukup lagi information, bagaimana saya nak dapatkan information tu dulu for me to finally solve the equation that I want. Okay, so that's one part that you have to really bear in mind when you're solving engineering question. So done on the FA0, uh, the X is uh, 0.8 lah because the question say conversion 80%. So X 0.8. So down minus RE. So minus RE is when my X, at my X that I want. So my X is 0.8. So dia adalah minus RE when my X is 0.8 which is 0.013. So, kamu replace saja minus RA dengan 0.013. So, tengok part ni kita bahagikan why we divide. Sebab table punya nilai adalah minus RA. So, kamu kena bahagi dengan nilai minus RA itu. You will get the volume as 2153.85 dm cube. If you are not too sure, again, you can do the unit cancellation. I can cancel my mole. I can cancel my second. I'm left with dm cube. I want to find volume, I get dm cube. dm cube is indeed volume. Most likely, your answer is correct. So, done on the single CSDR. Okay, next. We go to PFR. So, again, single PFR. So, single PFR, kita kena cari juga dia punya volume. So, volume of PFR equals to FA0 integrating 0 to 0 0.8. Why 0 to 0 0.8? Because... 1 PFR, single PFR, converting from zero conversion to final conversion 0 0.8. Okay, dx per minus RA, convert into Simpson one third rule, it becomes FA0, delta x per 3. Okay, so let's us discuss part this. But in Simpson one third rule, kamu kena ingat, kita kena divide x kita kan. So initial x kita 0, final x 0 0.8. Hence, my middle x will be 0.4. So, middle x tu kamu kena tahu sendiri macam nak cari. Titik tengah dia. 0, 0.8. Middle x, 0.4. Delta x is the gap or the julat or the difference between initial x to middle x. So, initial x, 0. Middle x, 0.4. Delta x, 0.4. Ataupun kamu nak cari kat belakang pun boleh. 0.4 to 0.8. The difference is also 0.4. So, delta x, 0.4 divided by 3. Okay, so done. 0.4, delta x, 0.4, bagi dengan 3. Sebab equation dia kata kena bagi dengan 3. Third, the last three points. So, it become 1 per minus RA at my initial x, which is 0, plus 4 per minus RA at my middle x, 0.4, plus 1 per minus RA at my final x, which is 0.8. So again, substitute je value, nak cari volume. So part yang kiri, apa yang kita nak cari. Part kanan semua kena ganti dengan nilai. So first part, FA0 masih 35 mol per second. Kita guna FA0 yang sama yang tadi kita kira untuk uh, CSTR. Sebab FA0, dia tak bergantung kepada reaktor. Dia bergantung kepada, uh, sorry, uh, FA0 dalam soalan ni bergantung kepada CA0 dan V0. Kalau CA0 dan V0 tak berubah, of course my FA0 pun tak berubah. So that's why my FA0 still 35 mol per second. Okay, multiply with uh, delta x 0.4 divided by 3. Okay, in the bracket, tengok table. When my x is 0, minus RA 0.053. When my x 0.4, minus RA 0.040. When my x 0.8, minus RA 0.00, eh, 0.013. So, kamu replace saja dengan nilai. Don't forget 
kamu kena divide by the value. You calculate correctly, you get the volume as 913.69 dm cube. So this is the volume of a single PFR if uh, we want to achieve conversion of 80%. So done for these two questions. Again, saya kecil sikit. I give you one minute to two minutes, then I will proceed to part C and D. Sebab uh, part C and D dah reacted in series, a little bit of a discussion. So you try to settle this, I will come back in one or two minutes. Right, okay, so done on question A and B. We go to the next two questions, C and D. Okay, so question C. Calculate the volume of the reactor. Calculate the volume of the reactors if two CSTR are connected in series with intermediate conversion 40%, final conversion 60%. Okay, sekarang soalan dah berubah sikit. Sebab sekarang saya ada dua reaktor. Uh, reaktor tu connected in series. And first reaktor, dia achieve intermediate conversion 40%. 0.4 means X1 0.4. Means yang reaktor pertama, dia convert daripada 0 to 0.4. X1 0.4. Dalam second reaktor, final conversion 60%. X2 0.6. Means yang reaktor kedua, dia convert daripada 0.4 kepada 0.6. X1 0.4, X2 0.6. They want us to find the volume. Okay, so kalau kena ingat, dua reaktor in series, kita kena cari two reactor volume. So we find for the first reactor, volume CSTR1 equals to, kalau kami ingat untuk reaktor pertama, the formula is similar to a single reactor. The only difference, dia menjadi fa not X1. Kamu kena tulis X1. Kamu tak boleh tulis X. Sebab kalau kamu tulis X, dalam soalan ni ada dua X. X1, X2. So you have to specify kalau reaktor pertama, dia adalah X1. Divided with minus RA at your X1. So FA not dia masih sama sebab soalan tak ubah, uh, doesn't change concentration, doesn't change your volumetric flow rate, your FA not is still the same. Okay, so 35 mol per second. My X1, 0.4. My minus RA, when my X is 0.4. Berpilih X saya, X1 saya 0.4. Minus RA dia adalah 0.040. How do I get that? Tengok ke atas table. 
when my x 0 0.4, my minus RA 0 0.040. So replace just 0 0.040, you get the volume as 350. So CSDR, first CSDR, normally memang student can do. The problem will come at the second CSTR. Sebab so, formula dah berubah. But ni yang saya sentiasa kena emphasize. When you have reactor in series, formula untuk second CSTR tu dah kena modify. So it becomes F volume CSTR 2. Okay, kamu kena specify. Kamu mencari volume for the second CSTR equals to FA0. FA0 is there. In bracket become X2 minus X1. Don't forget this part. Dalam bracket dah menjadi X2 minus X1. Okay, so as I told you, exam regardless fizikal ke tak fizikal pun kamu memang tak payah hafal. Tapi kamu kena ingat, betul-betul ingat kalau reaktor kedua dalam sistem CSTR, dalam bracket tu dah menjadi X2 minus X1. Okay, divide dengan minus RA at your X2. Okay, empat ni pun kena still confuse. Mana saat ini bila X2 ke X1 sebab ada duduk X2, X1 kan? So, don't forget, reaktor kedua minus RA dia pada X2. Reaktor pertama minus RA at X1. Okay, so replace dia dengan nilai FA0, 35. X2, 0.6 as given in the question. X1, 0.4. So, as I told you, katakanlah kamu terconfuse. X1 tolak X2 atau X2 tolak X1. Kalau kamu buat X1 minus X2, you definitely get a negative value. So, you know volume reactor can never be a negative. So, itu logik dia. Nilai kamu kira negatif. Tapi kamu tahu volume reactor, volume vessel kan? Volume vessel tak mungkin akan jadi negatif. Isi padu tak dapat, tak mungkin jadi negatif. So, kamu dah tahu something is wrong. So, switch je lah. Jadi, X2 minus X1. So, divide by minus RA when my X 0.6 at my X2 0.6. So, tengok table balik at 0.6 minus RA 0.025. So, kamu replace je minus RA with 0.025. You divide, you calculate, you will get the volume as 280 dm3. So, soalan ni taklah susah tetapi, of course, uh, if you forget the equation, why it become X2 minus X1, kamu lupa part tu, kamu just letak X2, which is normally what student do, student akan letak FA not X2. Yang tu biasanya student akan buat. So, tu yang menyebabkan dia salah. Kalau reaktor kedua, mesti X2 minus X1. Okay, so done on part C, we go to part D. So, part D pula sekarang adalah 2PFR. Connected in series with intermediate conversion 60%. So, final conversion 80%. So, sekarang soalan D, saya ada 2 PFR. My X1 0.6, my X2 0.8. Okay, so kita nak cari volume PFR, X1 0.6, X2 0.8. Okay, so let's us go one by one. So, in the first PFR, volume of the first PFR equals to F A0 integrating from 0 to 0 0.6. Why 0, 0 to 0 0.6? Sebab in the first PFR, I go from zero conversion, nothing is converted until 60% dalam reaktor pertama. Sebab tu lower limit kosong, upper limit 0 0.6. Dx per minus Re. Why I always emphasize on lower limit, upper limit? Sebab nanti bila kita nak buat pengiraan Simpson one third rule tu, kamu dah akan tahu starting point dengan final point dia. So, I become FA0 delta X per 3. Okay, so this part, kita kira berapa delta X. So, again, inertia X, 0. Our lower limit, our upper limit was 0 0.6. So, 0 to 0 0.6. Middle X dia adalah 0.3. So, middle X tu kamu kena tahu sendiri macam nak cari. It's just a middle conversion between 0 to 0.6. So, middle X dia 0.3. Then, you can find your delta X. So, delta X will be from 0 to 0.3. Delta X dia, beza dia 0.3. Kalau kat belakang pun 0.3 to 0.6, the middle X is still 0.3. Sorry, the gap, the delta X, the difference is still 0.3. So, delta X is 0 0.3 divided by 3. Okay. Uh, in bracket, 1 per minus RA at my lower limit, which is X0. So, 1 per minus RA when my X0. Plus, 4 per minus RA at my middle X, which is 0 0.3. So, 
4 over minus RA when my X, 0 0.3. Plus 1 per minus RA at my upper X, upper limit, which is 0 0.6. So 1 per minus RA <coughs> when my X, 0 0.6. When you have all these three, you replace into the equation. So FA not 35, delta X 0 0.3 divided by 3. Look, find from the table at 0 0.6 uh, minus RA dia 0 0.053. At 0, uh, sorry, at 0 minus RA 0 0.053. At 0 0.3 minus RA 0 0.045. At 0 0.6 minus RA 0 0.025. You calculate these, you will get ultimately the volume as 517.15 dm cube. Okay, so that's the final answer for the volume of first PFR. So similar concept, first PFR, normally student tak buat salah. So first PFR ni sama macam single PFR sebenarnya. Problem only comes at the second reactor. Always the problem comes at second reactor sebab, okay, now let us calculate second reactor. Volume PFR2, the second reactor volume equals to FA0, masih ada, but now integrating from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. So kenapa daripada 0 0.6 to 0 0.8? Sebab dalam reaktor kedua, dia convert yang asal yang masuk adalah 0 0.6. Dia convert kepada final conversion dia 0 0.8. X1 0 0.6, X2 0 0.8. So it become 0 0.6, 0 0.8 dx per minus Re. So then, ganti dalam bentuk Simpson one third rule, Fe0. Delta X per 3. Delta X ni again, this part yang selalu student akan make the mistake. Now, you have to understand, lower limit 0 0.6, upper limit 0 0.8. So, uh, maknanya X1 0 0.6, X2 0 0.8. Middle X di antara 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. Titik tengah dia, titik X dia adalah 0 0.7. Okay, so delta X dia, the gap or the difference is from 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, gap dia adalah 0 0.1. Kalau belakang pun 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, the delta X is also 0 0.1, the difference. That's why delta X is 0 0.1. This part memang always student miss, will make the mistake bila nak cari delta X. Part ni asal sudah akan buat salah, so I have to keep repeating it. It's the gap between... Uh, Lower lower x, uh, no, initial x to the middle x or middle x to the final x. So you have to be very careful about this part. So dah ganti delta x, okay, 0 0.1 divided by 3, FA0 kita dah tahu. Then go to the 3 point. So 3 point ni pun kamu kena be very careful because now your initial x is x1, 0 0.6. So that's why you become 1 per minus RA when my x, 0 0.6 plus 4 per minus RA when my X at 0 0.7 and my middle X plus 1 per minus RA at my final X, 0 0.8. So you get these three points correctly. Then you just look from the table for the three values. So tengok table pada 0.6 berapa minus RA? Pada 0.7, how much is minus RA? At 0 0.8, how much is your minus RA? You replace the number accurately, accordingly, you should be able to get the volume of the PFR for the second one as 395.67 dm cube. So, similar to CSTR, part yang, slide, uh, part yang student uh, tend to do mistake, part delta X. Dan part yang 3 point tu, dia tak sure, dia akan tak sure dia kena start dengan X1. X1, last point X2, middle X2 dia kena cari sini. Dia kena tahu titik tengah antara X1 dan X2. Okay. So done for question number 4. Question number 4 kan? Okay. So again, as usual, I give you about uh, 1 to 2 minute uh, break. Okay. Not break, uh, gap or time so that you can try to attempt it. Then I will come back again in 1 to 2 minutes time. Right.
Okay, all right. So we continue with the next question. So we go to question number five. So answer number five. We come back to question with uh, eleven spear plot. Good job, eh? I think also eleven six. Okay, let's go to question with eleven spear plot. Right. So the question says, uh, the gas phase reaction is given as follows. A produce B. Okay, the re irre irreversible reaction is carried out isothermally in a flow reactor at the initial rate of 10 dm cube per second. Okay, so this is uh, at this part, okay, uh, there are certain words that mungkin kamu tak pasti lagi, tapi saya explainkan dulu. So, first thing first, dia adalah gas phase reaction. One. Second, dia kata irreversible reaction. So, until chapter 4, we will still discuss irreversible reaction, meaning reaction that occurs at forward direction. But until dalam chapter 4, you will also learn reversible reaction. So, reversible means it goes forward, it can also go backward. Okay, next, isothermally. So, nanti sampai chapter 6, you will learn first isothermal je. Means that the, there's no changes of temperature during the reaction. But later dalam chapter 6, you will then learn for the system di mana we have change of temperature. Okay, so that one so far, okay. Next, dia kata uh, flow reactor. Dia kata initial rate 10 dm cube per second. Okay, so dia kata dm cube per second. So you know dm cube volume second time, volume per time, volumetric flow rate. So dia kata initial, right? So this is uh, epsilon naught of V naught. V naught equals to 10 dm cube per second. So saya satu you katakan part ni kamu tersalah, kamu ingatkan yang 10 ni adalah CA naught. Habislah keseluruhan soalan. Atau kamu ingat uh, 10 ni adalah FA naught. Habislah keseluruhan soalan. So you have to be very careful. This is initial volumetric flow rate V naught. 10. Okay, kadang-kadang saya kena V not, kadang-kadang saya kena epsilon not. Sama eh, dia maksudnya volumetric flow rate. Okay. The feed mixture consists of 45 mole percent inert and the balance reactant A at 40 Celsius. So, can you see this part? Dia beri kita, dia beritahu kita, initially to, feed, feed to initial lah kan, consists of 45 mole percent inert balance A. So, kamu perasan dalam, uh, in my reaction, I have one reactant which is A. However, this is gas phase kan, this is gas A. However, it's not 100% gas A dalam sistem pada waktu asal or in the feed, it wasn't 100% pure gas A. Instead, we have 45 mole percent of inert gas. Kita kita tak tahulah gas tu apa tapi it's inert gas. Meaning it won't be involved in the reaction but it exists in the system. So 45 mole percent gas inert. So kalau balance dia A means 55 mole percent to gas A. So 45 mole percent inert baki 55 percent mole tu adalah gas A. Means why A not saya 55, uh, YA not saya 0 0.55. Okay, kenapa 0 0.55? Sebab 45% inert, 55% A. So, YA not 0 0.55. Next, dia beritahu kita temperature 40 Celsius. T not 40 Celsius. The initial partial pressure of the inert is 5 atm. So, dia beri kita pula Partial pressure inert. So, dia beritahu kita tekanan inert tu adalah 5 atm. So, now information dia beritahu kita, dia tell us, I have 45% inert and this 45% inert ni adalah 5 atm. Dia bukan total, dia bukan gas A, bukan campuran gas A, gas B, but eh, bukan campuran gas A and inert. It's just the inert gas. Yang 45% inert gas ni, pressure dia 5 atm. Okay, that's information they give us. Right, so they says they give us the Levin spear plot. Okay, right, so uh, Levin spear plot, 1 per minus Ra versus X. Right, next. The reaction was conducted in two CSTR in series, determine the volume of both reactors required to achieve 60% conversion at the first reactor and 80% conversion at the second reactor. Dia kata kita run this in a CSTR. Dia nak kita cari volume, okay, and they say X1 0.6, X2 0.8. They want us to find the volume. 
Okay, so let's say you don't know where to start. Of course lah, kita nak cari volume. Kita start dulu dengan design equation dia. Okay, so kalau kamu confuse part-part sentence yang banyak-banyak information tu. Why all sudden? Uh, kenapa all sudden ramai yang left lah? Kamu ada kelas lain ke? Hello? Do you have any other class? Because all sudden I realize 10 to 20, eh, 10 student terus leave. Do you have any other class dah selepas ni ke? Ada yang boleh jawabkan ke? Teka tak tak sure? Tak sure. Uh, saya punya sebelah setengah. Ah sebab memang ni waktu uh, lab. Uh, hmm. Our internet tiba-tiba suddenly uh, disconnected. Oh alright, no wonder. I think tiba-tiba 10-20 orang tinggal. Okay then we tunggu dulu. We can't, I wait for the rest to come back. Kita tunggu kejap eh. Right, so I will continue. Alright, I will continue back. Okay, I think some of you already come back. But tak apa kalau yang terlepas tu nanti uh, just watch the video back. Right, so in this question, dia nak cari volume. So of course, if you are not too sure, information macam banyak sangat kan, kamu tak sure nak start pada mana, you just start from the design equation. Sebab kamu tahu nak cari volume, dia mesti start dengan design equation. Okay, so you know, uh, to find the volume, you will start uh, for the first reactor, for the first CSTR, the equation is given as volume. Volume CSTR1 equals to FA not X per minus RA at X1. Okay, you start from there. Okay, so you know, kalau kita nak cari volume reactor, because the question wants to find the volume. So the left hand side is the one that I want to find. So on the right hand side, every unknown tu kamu dah kena cari dulu nilai. Kalau tak ada nilai, memang tak boleh solve. So first, kita start dengan uh, FA not. So same concept. Kalau nak nak tahu nak cari F A not, dia mestilah that value is in the form of mole per time. So kalau kamu perasan dalam soalan, there's no information yang berikan kamu mole per time. Yang ada pun hanya volume per time which is volumetric flow rate. Okay. However, it can give you a little bit of indicator sebab kamu tahu kan kalau kita nak cari F A not, kita boleh cari kalau kita tahu V not dan C A not. Previous class we already know right? F A not equals to C A not multiply with V not. Means kalau saya tahu C A not, saya tahu V not, by right saya boleh cari F A not. So that's your first indicator. Okay. Second, kamu tahu pula V not dah diberi. We already know V not. Okay. Means if I know C A not, I by right I can already get my F A not. So the challenge pula C A not sebab kamu tengok dalam soalan tak ada pun sebarang nilai dalam bentuk mole per volume sebab concentration mesti mole per volume. There was nothing in the question in the form of mole per volume. However, kamu ingat pula di satu dia kata soalan engineering dia ada step 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 where you have to actually think from step to step. Dia tak beritahu kamu directly kamu kena cari F A not. Dia tak beritahu kamu directly kamu kena cari ni tapi kamu kena fikir how to actually solve it. Okay now next cabaran dia nak tahu F A not kena cari C A not. Okay C A not tak diberi. However you know this is gas phase reaction. Kalau gas phase and kalau kamu tengok dalam soalan, dia beri suhu, dia beri tekanan. Regardless apalah tekanan atau suhu tu, it tells you that most likely you can use the ideal gas law. Sebab ideal gas law boleh cari CA0. So CA0 darab V0 dapatlah FA0. Dapat FA0 bolehlah solve. 
Okay, so kamu tahu step yang kedua sekarang ataupun step ketiga, kita nak kena cari C A not dulu. Dapat C A not, darab V not, dapat F A not, boleh solve problem. But how to find C A not pula? Okay, so C A not equals dengan, sama je konsep, uh, sama dengan Y A not, P not per R T not. Okay, I said to you, tekanan tu nak cari untuk A, dia mesti keperkataan A, that pressure must be from A. Kalau dia beri kita total total pressure multiply dengan mole fraction A. Kalau dia beri kita terus pressure A, terus guna pressure A divide by RT0. Okay. So soalan 4 ni pula, dia beri kita, uh, they do give us YA0. Sebab dia kan dia kata 45 mole percent inert. Uh, remainder A. So YA0 0.55. Okay, dan 0.55 tu kita dah tahu. Mole fraction for A is 55%, 0.55. What about P0, total pressure dalam sistem? So, kalau kamu perasan dalam soalan ni, dia tak beri kita, dia beri kita pressure. But that pressure was partial pressure of the inert. Kita nak cari sebenarnya tekanan E. Tapi dia tak beri kita tekanan E tau, dia beri kita tekanan inert. So, macam kita nak cari, kita kita ada dua option. Dia beri kita dia beri kita tekanan E kan, ah, tekanan inert. Either kamu nak cari jumlah tekanan darab dengan mole fraction ataupun kamu boleh kamu juga boleh cari tekanan A. Which are the option? Actually, both pun kamu boleh buat. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, in this example, saya guna Routes Law untuk cari jumlah tekanan. Okay, cara, -cara dia nak cari jumlah tekanan adalah guna Routes Law. Means, uh, kalau saya tahu mole fraction inert, saya multiply dengan total pressure, saya dapat pressure inert. So, saya dah tahu pressure inert kan? Saya dah tahu pressure inert. Saya tahu more fraction inert. Saya boleh tahu total pressure. Ataupun, atau arti kata yang saya senang nak terangkan. Okay, because this is official calculation, I show you this way. In easier way to understand, macam ni. 45% mole percent inert ni bersamaan dengan uh, 5 ATM. 45% ni bersamaan dengan 5 ATM. Kalau kamu nak tahu jumlah tekanan kesuruhan sistem P0 bersamaan dengan 100%. 45% sama dengan 5 ATM. Kalau 100% berapa ATM? Kalau kamu ingat darab silang, kamu boleh darab silang kan? Bila kamu darab silang, kamu sebenarnya akan dapat total pressure tu 11.11. 11.11 if you use that way which is as shown here. Okay, menggunakan cara yang sama ni. 45%, 5 ATM. 100% how many ATM? 11.11. This is the total pressure of the system. Means pressure A tambah pressure inert. So kalau nak tahu pressure A, kamu kena darablah dengan 0.55. That's one way. Another way, kalau kamu nak terus tahu directly pressure A pun boleh. PA not. Macam nak tahu? Darab silang lagi. 45% inert sama dengan 5 ATM. Kalau saya ada 55% A, berapa ATM? Darab silang je. So, means 0.55 times 5 divided by 0.45, you get terus pressure A. That's also another way. Kalau kamu terus dapat pressure A, kamu terus ganti dengan PA0 tu. Kamu dah jangan darab dengan 0.55. So, that's why I say in engineering, especially in engineering, kadang-kadang student, few student will have different way of doing the calculation. Dia ada yang macam, macam, macam I told you just now, some will find P0, some will find PA0. Sama je jawapan akhir dia. Uh, but make sure you call, you use it correctly. Macam saya, in this question, I find first total pressure. So, I mesti darab dengan 0.55. Kalau kamu terus cari pressure A, dah tak payah darab. Terus guna pressure tu. Okay, so darab 0.55 divide by RT0. So, my pressure ATM, I use lah gas constant yang ada ATM. So, 0.082 ATM, dm cube per mole Kelvin. Temperature, my T0 was, uh, sorry, my T0 was 40 Celsius. I replace, I convert into Kelvin. I will get my initial concentration 0.238 mole per dm cube. So, you convert the you convert the unit, you get the concentration. But jangan stop kat sana, tak habis lagi soalan, tak soft pun lagi soalan sebab kita sebenarnya nak cari apa? FA0, so dah tahu CA0, okay, multiply with the uh, given volumetric flow rate which is 10, then only you get your FA0. So, jalan-jalan apa panjang panjang ni sebenarnya, kamu nak cari FA0 je dulu, belum pun lagi soft. Dah dapat FA0, baru kamu boleh solve soalan itu. Then only you can replace your FA0. You can replace your X1 which is 0.6. Then you have to find from the plot 
when my x 0 0.6, 1 per minus R A 8.85. So you multiply with 8.85. Jangan lupa kalau guna plot, dia terus darab sebab plot tu adalah 1 per minus R A pada x yang kamu nak cari. So it was 8.85. You multiply, you get the volume of your CSTR1 as 12.64. So done for question part A, uh, reactor pertama. Second reactor. So second reactor, volume CSTR2 equals to formula, jangan lupa second reactor, FA0 equals to FA0 in bracket X2 minus X1. Tutup bracket divided by minus RA at my X2. So X2 0 0.6, X1 0 0.6, X2 0 0.8, X1 0 0.6 minus RA is when my X is 0 0.8 minus RA pada X2. So when my X 0 0.8, my 1 per minus RA is 20 from the plot. Okay, daripada plot kamu dah tahu nilai dia. Kamu ganti sahaja. So become FA0, FA0 masih sama as again. Kalau tak ada perubahan volumetric flow rate, there are no changes in temperature, pressure, so on and so forth. FA0 tu masih sama. You can still use the same FA0. So FA0 multiply with X2 minus X1, multiply with 1 per minus RA when my X 0.8 you get the volume as 9.52. Done for first part of the question. So question ni, uh, not, uh, I would say a bit tricky part yang nak cari CA0 tu. Ataupun kamu kena tahu sebenarnya kita nak guna FA0 dalam equation. FA0 tak diberi. Tapi kita tahu FA0 boleh dicari kalau kita tahu CA0 dan V0. Tapi CA0 tak diberi. Kamu kena cari CA0. Tapi CA0 pun tak diberi information straightforward. So, That's the what I keep emphasizing. You have to really, really understand question. Sebab dalam test exam, saya takkan bagi pun sebijik macam ni. I will change a little bit. But kalau kamu faham, you can answer. But if you like, if you don't understand, like kamu just ikut je jalan kerja ni, then it will be a little bit problem later as you solve question. Okay? So, want to meet? Yes, yes. Uh, I nak tengok volume untuk CSTR1 boleh tak? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Tak sama ke jawapan? 12.64. Betul ke? Do you get the correct do you get the same answer? Siapa tadi tanya saya tu? Dapat tak jawapan yang sama? Uh, uh -huh. I tengah cari uh, I tak dapat tapi macam Mhm. Uh -huh. FA not uh, FA not kamu 2.38 from here. Uh, X1 0.6 uh, hmm. At 0.6 My 1 uh, per minus RA 8.85 8.85 ni So darab dengan 8.85 Oh darab eh Sebab ni kan 1 per minus RA Jangan lupa ah Jangan lupa Dia bukan Minus RA Ni adalah 1 per minus RA So terus darab Tak boleh bagi Ha, ingat tak, kalau table, kalau tadi kita guna table, tu adalah minus RA. Kamu kena bahagi dengan nilai tu. Dalam plot, dia dah satu per minus RA. Dia terus nilai satu per minus RA itu. So, kamu terus darab je dengan nilai tu. Kamu tak boleh bagi. Faham tak? Faham. Ha. 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 Tengok lah. Ha. Ha. You must really take note. That's why saya emphasize few times lah. Jangan lupa beza bila tengok plot dengan bila ambil daripada table. Ambil daripada table, kena bagi. Ambil daripada plot, darab terus. Okay? Right. So, then I go to the next part of the question. Okay, next part. Okay, part ni dah susah sikit. Okay, this part is slightly different already the question. Or this one, kamu cari FA0. Kamu cari volume. So, ini dia kata, let's see the question. The question says, reaction conducted in 2 PFR in series Determine the space time. Kamu baru belajar semalam kan space time. Tau. For both reactor to achieve 40% intermediate conversion and overall conversion 80%. Okay, so I'm sorry. Kata saya ada dua PFR in series. Uh, reactor pertama X1 0.4. Reactor kedua X2 0.8. And dia kata sekarang dia bukan suruh cari volume. Dia bukan suruh cari FA0. Dia suruh kita cari space time. So space time sekarang kamu dah pernah belajar. Saya dah ajar space time. Tapi saya tak belak, saya tak ajar space time in in the form of design reactor volume kan. But this question involve both. So how do we do it? Okay so now mind. 
Katakan kamu tak sure, again kamu start je dengan design equation sebab kalau melibatkan Lemosphere plot, the table, definitely it will start first from the design equation. So let us start from the design equation, design equation untuk PFR. Volume PFR 1 equals to sebab dua reaktor in volume, ah, dua reaktor in series. Okay, so reaktor 1, reaktor 2. Okay, so volume reaktor 1 equals to F A0 integrating 0 to 0 0.4 sebab reaktor pertama achieve X1 0 0.4 DX per minus RE. Ni yang kamu tahu yang design equation. Okay, however, kalau kamu ingat Okay, space time semalam saya ajar kamu space time tau equals to volume reactor over initial volumetric flow rate V0, V per V0 or V per epsilon naught. V besar tu volume, epsilon naught tu volumetric flow rate. Baru kita dapat kita punya tau. Okay, so kamu kalau kamu perasan kalau kita nak cari tau, miss dalam equation saya, saya dah kena ada volume dan volumetric flow rate. Selagi tak ada volume, tak ada initial volumetric flow rate, tak mungkin saya akan tahu tau. Okay. So, if you check this first part of the equation, part yang depan, volume tu kita dah ada. Okay. Saya nak cari tau, saya tahu kena ada volume, ada volumetric flow rate, initial volumetric flow rate. Volume saya dah ada, tapi initial volumetric flow rate saya tak ada lagi. Tetapi, kamu pernah ingat, Molar flow rate Fa0 ni kan sama dengan Ca0 multiply with V0. Okay, so part ni yang kena sikit lah. Kamu kena faham sikit. Okay. Uh, saya, kamu ingat, okay, Fa0 tu boleh juga kita, uh, we put it in the form of Ca0 multiply with V0. Okay, so when I do that, so become Ca0 V0 integral part masih sama 0 to 0 0.4 dx per minus Re. So, when I do this, what happens? Saya nak tahu, saya nak space time kan? So, if you realize, I can move my V0, my V0 sekarang kat bahagian kanan kan? If I move my V0, my initial volumetric flow rate, from right to left to here, it become a division. So, it become volume PFR 1 divide with initial volumetric flow rate. So, do you realize kalau volume bahagi dengan initial volumetric flow rate, dapatlah space time untuk reaktor pertama saya. Kalau saya divide volume reaktor pertama dengan initial volumetric flow rate, saya dapatlah space time peta untuk reaktor pertama saya. So, right left hand side, saya dah dapat apa yang saya nak, which is my space time. What happens to my right hand side? Right hand side, saya kan dah move my V0, volumetric flow rate saya dah move ke bahagian kiri. So, bahagian kanan saya hanya tinggal dengan CA0. V0 dah tak ada. V0 dah dipindah ke belah kiri. So, become CA0. Integral part masih sama. So, become 0, 0 0.4 dx per minus Re. So, again, CN, uh, kita kena tukar dalam bentuk Simpson one third rule. So, CA0 tu kekal sebab CA0 tu tak ada kaitan dengan what Simpson one third rule. Simpson one third rule is to address the integral part. So, bahagian depan CA0 tinggal. Bahagian belakang integral dah menjadi Simpson one third rule. So, now I can already find directly my space time. Space time sama dengan CA0 ganti dengan Simpson one third rule. Yang Simpson one third rule punya pengiraan tu adalah masih sama. Ini, first of all, CA0 kita guna yang asal part A yang tadi kita cari uh, CA0 yang tadi tu, kita masih boleh guna sebab tak ada perubahan uh, tekanan, suhu, uh, so on. The CA0 is still the same, 0.238. Delta X, okay, S I told you, dia daripada uh, 0 to 0.4. X1 kita 0.4, right? 0 to 0.4, our middle X is 0.2. Our gap delta X will be 0 to 0.2, delta X is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 to 0.4, delta X is also 0 0.2. So, delta X 0 0.2 divide by 3. Then, in the bracket, 1 per minus RA at my X0, plus 4 per minus RA at my middle X, 0 0.2, plus 1 per minus RA when my X, 0 0.4. So again, jangan lupa kamu menggunakan plot. Menggunakan plot, dia adalah nilai tu kamu kena take directly. You have to substitute directly. You have to multiply directly. Dia bukan bahagi sebab nilai plot adalah 
1 per minus RE. Dia bukan minus RE. Dia adalah 1 per minus RE. Kamu terus darab directly this value. So you do it correctly, you get okay, space time dia sebagai 0.33 second. In your first reactor, the space time is 0.33 second. Okay, so that's for the first reactor. Untuk second reactor, space time pun dah berlainan. Kenapa? Sebab space time reactor pertama adalah sama dengan volume reactor pertama bahagi initial volumetric flow rate. Space time yang kedua sama dengan volume reactor kedua divide by the initial volumetric flow rate. Your volume reactor takkan sama dah. Kalau volume takkan sama, space time pun takkan sama. So you have to find the second space time. So apa beza dia? So become... Uh, sama je konsep dia, volume PFR2, kita start daripada equation yang sama, volume PFR2 equals to FA0, ini equation design yang original, integrating 0.4 to 0.8 sebab reaktor kedua is integrating from X1 to X2, 0.4 to 0.8, dx per minus RE. Same concept, saya nak cari space time, saya kena ada volume per initial volumetric flow rate. Volume saya dah ada, saya tak ada volumetric flow rate, initial volumetric flow rate. But I remember FA0 is equal to CA0 multiplied with V0. Itu adalah perkataan yang kita dah pernah tahu. Okay, so I replace it that way. Then integral part masih sama. Part integral ni kita tak kacau, kita biarkan sahaja. Then next part, I will again move my initial volumetric flow rate from right to left. So kamu ingat matematik kan kalau kamu pindah daripada kiri ke kanan yang pengatas akan jadi pengbawah dia akan become a division. Sebab tu dia menjadi volume PFR to divide by the initial volumetric flow rate. So it become a division. So volume bagi dengan volumetric flow rate dapatlah space time for the second reactor. That's how we express now the we express the equation. Now it become space time untuk reaktor kedua. So kalau kamu perasan memang dalam note saya, saya memang tak ajar part ni. Tapi saya ajar part ni separately sebenarnya. So dalam tutorial ni, kita combine that knowledge. So that's what you have to understand about reaction. Dia, kamu kena somewhat no equation ataupun somewhat no perkaitan equation and you have to learn how to sometimes rearrange or recombine equation untuk mendapat apa yang kamu nak cari. Okay, so then equals to on your left, on your right hand side, become C A dot, sebab V0 dah tak ada, V0 dah kena pindah kan, tinggal C A dot, dan your integral part, integral jangan lupa, X1 to X2. So in terms of Simpson wanted rule, C A dot maintains, integral part become delta X per 3. So again, sama, kita start dengan 0.4, we end with 0.8, so the middle X will be 0.6. So the difference of X, from 0.4 to 0.6, dia punya difference 0.2. From 0.6 to 0.8, difference dia pun masih 0.2. So, delta X is 0.2 divided by 3. CA0 masih sama. Kita tak ubah. Tak ubah pressure, tak ubah, tekan, tak ubah pressure, tak ubah temperature. CA0 is still the same. So, at the back, become 3 points, right? So, 1 per minus RA when my X 0.4 plus 4 per minus RA when my X 0.6 plus 1 per minus RA when my X 0.8. So, look from the plot. Make sure again, tengok betul-betul daripada plot. Dia adalah 1 per minus RA. Kamu terus multiply directly the answer. Okay, don't forget multiply correctly. You get the Space time for the second reactor as 0.96 second. That's the space time for your second reactor uh, for this PFR. Okay, so done for this question. I will give you about one minute. Okay, but I will end the tutorial. Actually, I will end this tutorial at this question. Sebab I don't think you can go anymore. Dah soalan dah sampai lima soalan. Okay, so I will continue next week. I will continue this tutorial next week. Sebab we still got time. So I give you one to two minute first. Then after that, I will end the tutorial. And uh, we will. I will see you next Monday for the lecture. Okay, right? So kamu tengok dulu kejap. Nanti saya akan uh, tutup.
as a homework for you, extra work, because I would like you to try to attempt by yourself the question number seven for you to test whether do you understand or not the tutorial. Okay, if you can do question number seven by yourself, uh, the answers are already given in the question itself. I already give you the final answer. If you are able to solve it by yourself, that probably means that you are okay already for chapter two. Okay, so I will just discuss one question for chapter two tutorial. Okay, so for question number six, all right, we have. Yes, I book up we have a mixture consists of pure A enters the reactor. Okay, so whenever you see the word pure, okay, pure A, you know it means it's hundred percent of A that enters initially. So that implies that. Uh, there's only one reactant and the second implication it means there are no other system or there are no other compounds in the system initially except for A. Okay, so maksudnya kalau in terms of mole percent, uh, 100% mole A ataupun dalam terms fraction, uh, why A not is actually one. Okay, so that one is extra, extra information, extra knowledge for you. Kalau dia kata pure A enters the reactor initially, dia ada dua implication. First implication is only one reactant, reactant A. Second implication means initially 100 mole percent A, which is why A not the mole fraction. Initial mole fraction of A is 1. Okay, so they give us the form of a table. So ingatkan table ni, kalau kamu perasan kamu last Monday, we already do chapter 3, right? So chapter 3 tu, kalau kamu perasan, we are learning how to calculate minus ROE. So dalam chapter 2, minus ROE tu dah diberi kepada kamu dalam bentuk table. Meaning, if I have X, I give you the minus ROE. So we use this table to calculate. So dalam chapter 3 yang kamu belajar last Monday tu, kita tak tahu minus ROE tu. So waktu kita macam reverse engineering, uh, kita kena kira pula minus RE for that for that case, right? Okay, so in the plant, they are available 250dm cube CSTR reactors or 250dm cube PFR reactors. Okay, so they imagine now in your plant, you have the uh, two types of reactor. You have CSTR of which kamu ada dua CSTR dengan volume dia 50dm cube. So, kamu tengok DM cube dah mention dia volume. Kamu tahu dia adalah volume reactor kamu. So, you have two CSTR, each 50 DM cube. And you have two PFR, each also 50 DM cube, the volume. So, basically, you have four reactors. Two CSTR, two PFR, empat-empat reactor pun volume dia 50 DM cube. Okay. To achieve higher overall conversion of A, the technologist decided to use either one of the reactor in series. Okay, so dia kata untuk mencapai conversion yang lebih tinggi, okay, the technologist decided dia kena guna either dua reactor, dua CSTR atau dua PFR dan yang kedua reactors ni mesti bersambung secara series. Okay, it is targeted that intermediate conversion to be achieved 20%. Okay, kamu tahu kan intermediate conversion dengan overall conversion kan? Intermediate conversion, conversion in the reactor before the final reactor. Overall conversion, mesti conversion for the final reactor. So, meaning in this case, we got two CSTR atau two PFR. So, the conversion in the first reactors. So, the first CSTR atau first PFR, dia lah X1, X1 dia 0.2. So, kamu assume ada kamu guna PFR yang bersiri atau CSTR yang bersiri, reaktor pertama tu conversion yang dicapai mestilah 0.2. X1, 0.2 and overall conversion 80%. So, means conversion at the second reactor, either second CSTR ke, second PFR ke, X2 dia adalah 0.8. Okay, so either one uh, system pun, the conversion in the second reactor must be 0 0.8. So, this is initial flow rate 1.5 mol per second. Okay, so, you know initial means dia adalah molar flow rate yang, uh, dia adalah uh, pad, uh, the value at the initial. Okay, then dia kata mol per second, 1.5 mol per second. So, now you dah tahu, right? Mol dimension dia pun mol. Second dimension dia time. So, mol per time, molar flow rate. So, molar flow rate kamu tahu is F, right? So, initial not. Then, kalau initial yang reactant masuk hanyalah A. So, is F A not. So, they give you already F A not 1.5 mol per second. 
So imagine lah, always keep reminding you, when you see the number, be very careful. Contohnya katakan 1.5 ni, uh, kamu tersalah. Okay, it's actually FA0 kan, tapi katakan kamu ingat dia CA0. So if you put it wrongly, memang the whole entire calculation akan jadi salah. So that's the tendency yang biasa macam uh, students cannot do well in reaction. It's basically normally is this reason. Dia tersalah tengok value, tersalah identify value tu adalah sebenarnya apa. Sebab dalam soalan dia tak tulis kan molar flow rate kan, dia tulis flow rate. So kamu boleh assume molar flow rate. Dia boleh jadi volumetric flow rate juga sebenarnya. So you have to be very careful about the value and the unit. So in this case, this is FA0. Okay, dia kata evaluate which reactor configuration can be used to achieve the targeted conversion by comparing the calculated and available reactor volume. State the reason. Okay, so dia tanya sekarang. Since we have two configuration, okay, kamu bayangkan dalam lab, uh, kamu punya plan, you have two configuration, either you want to use two CSTR or you want to use two PFR. Tapi syaratnya, uh, volume tu dah ada, volume tu dah available, and conversion tu mesti mencapai apa yang dia nak, 0.2 x1, 0.8 for x2. So dia tanya, kita kena evaluate reaktor susunan reaktor PFR ke atau CSTR ataupun kedua-dua yang kita boleh guna untuk memenuhi to fulfill the conversion requirement. So how do we do this? So actually this question is example of problem solving. You know all this one, kamu cari, kamu cari volume which is katakanlah in your plan you have the uh, budget or you have you are given the the freedom to purchase new reactor, okay, kamu cari volume, kamu purchase lah reactor volume yang memenuhi apa yang kamu nak. Tapi most of the time, dalam plan, that's very rarely you are able to purchase new equipment unless your plan is really a new plan. If your plan has already been established, very rarely you are allowed to purchase new equipment. Most of the time, you have to make do with what you have. So kamu macam problem solving lah. Okay, saya dah ada equipment ni. Boleh tak saya guna equipment yang sedia ada kalau saya masih nak memenuhi certain requirement. So how do we solve this? Okay, so to solve this problem is basically what you do is, that's why dia kata, compare calculated and available reactor volume. Miss, katakan, you know your requirement of the conversion, you calculate the volume reactor yang diperlukan. When you calculate the volume, that's actually the minimum volume of your reactor required for you to achieve that conversion. So, when you calculate the volume, you compare dengan the available reactor volume. So, maksudnya, katakan, if you calculate the reactor volume, is uh, is smaller or lesser than the, the available volume, then you can use the reactor. Tetapi katakan apa yang kamu kira tu, volume yang kamu kira tu adalah lebih besar daripada uh, volume reactor yang sedia ada. Hence, you cannot use the reactor. Sebab apa yang kamu kira tu adalah volume minimum ataupun volume yang paling kecil yang diperlukan untuk kamu some, uh, achieve the desired conversion. So, example, example, let's say you calculate the volume reactor yang kamu perlukan adalah 5 liter. Means, kalau kamu tak ada volume reactor 5 liter ni, tindak balas ni tak boleh berlaku untuk mencapai conversion yang kamu nak. So, you calculate 5 liter. Let's say in your plan, the reactor yang ada hanyalah 3 liter. So, definitely you cannot run ready because the 3 liter reactor yang ada kat plan tu takkan dapat mencapai conversion yang kamu kira. However, let's say you calculate 5 liter, kat dalam plan kamu tu reactor tu adalah katakan 7 liter. So then, yes, the reactor, the available reactor can be used for the system. Okay, so that's the meaning of this. Tetapi in this case, kamu kena berhati-hati. It's not only one reactor. You have two reactor in series. Meaning, you have to make sure both reactor tu memenuhi uh, is lesser than the available reactor volume. Tak boleh salah satu saja. Sebab kalau salah satu pun, tindak balas tu masih takkan dapat mencapai conversion, kedua-dua conversion yang dia kendaki. Because you remember, conversion tak reset. First con first reactor flows to the second reactor. Means both reactor volume tu yang available mestilah cukup for both reaction as well. So means, what do we do? Kita kira dulu volume, CSTR1, CSTR2, we compare with the available uh, plant punya reactor, we calculate PFR1, PFR2, kita compare lagi sekali dengan volume PFR yang available in the plant. Okay, so we always start first with uh, CSTR lah, CSTR is the easiest calculation. Okay, so now we calculate. 
the first CSTR, volume first CSTR, if you forget, okay, don't worry, as I told you, it's an open book, uh, you can always refer to the notes. Okay, so the formula is volume CSTR1 equals to FA naught X1 per minus RA at your X1 or at or at your intermediate conversion. Okay, so your FA naught is 1.5 mole per second. We have already identified from the question. X1 is a 0 0.2, your conversion at the first reactor, intermediate conversion, divided by minus RA at X2, at X1, sorry, maksudnya, minus RA when your X is 0 0.2. So, you look at the table, senang je, tengok table, when my X 0 0.2, Minus R A dia 0.050. Okay, so sebab tu chapter 2 ni senang. Kamu dah tak payah kira minus R A. Dia terus bagi je. Kamu tahu conversion, kamu terus tahu dah berapa minus R A dia. Which is 0.050. Okay, so bagi calculate. The volume of the first CSTR is actually 6 dm cube. Means, nanti kata lain. Kamu perlukan sekurang-kurangnya 6 dm3 volume reactor tu, kamu dah boleh mencapai conversion 0.2 ataupun, ataupun 20%. Okay, done. So, we go to the next one. So, for the second reactor, kita nak kira untuk reactor kedua sebab reactor CSTR tu is connected by series. So, the volume in the second reactor, VCSTR2, Okay, is equal to FA0. Now, equation dia dah berubah. Kamu kena ingat part ni. Biasa macam... First reactor, student takkan buat salah. Usually, rarely they do mistakes in the first reactor but they will tend to do mistakes in the second reactor sebab dia lupa kalau reactor kedua, volume dia equals to FA0. In bracket tu ada X2 minus X1. Okay, kita dah belajar kan dalam chapter 2 how to derive the equation. Don't forget kalau reactor kedua, reactor ketiga, reactor keempat, reactor kelima. Dia dalam bracket tu mesti conversion yang reactor reaktor yang sekarang minus conversion reaktor yang sebelumnya. Maksudnya katakan kalau reaktor kedua is uh, X2 minus X1. Let's see if it's a third reaktor. Dia akan menjadi FA0 in bracket X3 minus X2 per minus RA pada X3. Reaktor keempat FA0 dalam bracket X4 minus X3 tutup bracket divided by minus RA at X4. So, don't forget that part, okay? So, become uh, X2 minus X1 per minus RA at X2. So, FA0 still 1.5. FA0 tak berubah sebab FA0 adalah initial molar flow rate yang masuk pada the very first reactor. Regardless, kalau ada 10 reactor pun, yang FA0 tu masih FA0 yang sama. Dia tak berubah sebab kita kira daripada the very first reactor punya molar flow rate. In bracket, X2 is 0.8, uh, X1 is 0.2. So, you divide by minus RA at your X2. Maksudnya, pada 0.8, my X2, my minus RA is 0.013. So, I replace 0.013. You calculate, you get the second volume, 69.23. Okay, so maybe you wonder... Kalau reaktor pertama, volume dia kecil saja kan? Tapi reaktor kedua, kenapa volume dia besar? Okay, logically, reaktor pertama hanya perlu mencapai 20% conversion sahaja. Reaktor kedua ni nak mencapai conversion from 0.2 to 0.8. You can see the gap of the conversion yang nak capai dalam reaktor kedua tu adalah sangat besar. So, when the gap is bigger, naturally the volume needed is lebih, uh, will be bigger lah because I need to convert a bigger conversion. Okay, now, after you already obtain reaktor pertama, reaktor kedua punya volume, what you need to do, you you want to determine, right, whether it's suitable or not to be used, right? Okay, so you have to compare dengan available uh, volume of the reactor yang kamu ada kat plan. Kamu kena ingat, volume yang kamu perlukan adalah 6 dan 69. You need 6 and 69. In your plan, the reactor volume is 50 and 50. Okay, so comparison, Reaktor pertama, by right, you can use. Sebab kamu hanya perlukan 6 sahaja, dah boleh buat tindak balas tu. Your plan ada 50. Okay, done. So, reaktor pertama, by right, you can use the available one. However, for the second reactor, if you realise, uh, you need at least 69.23 dm3. Only you can achieve 80%. 
you can see tapi dalam plan saya the second CSTR volume is only 50. So miss tak cukup sebab kamu hanya ada 50 saja DMQ tetapi sebenarnya penyiraan you need at least 69. So you can say that this configuration, although the first one can be used, but the second one cannot be used, the entire configuration tak boleh guna. Sebab untuk mencapai 80%, dia kena kena kedua-dua dia kena kedua-dua volume reactor tu fulfill. Baru kamu boleh guna reactor itu. Okay, so first part, CSTR, we can conclude the configuration cannot be used because the second reactor volume uh, calculated volume is bigger than the required. Uh, the calculated volume is bigger than the available volume. Okay, so CSTR we cannot use. So we go to the next uh, example. Okay, we go to the next one, PFR pula. Okay, so CSTR kita dah dan, kita dah buat kesimpulan. We go to PFR, kita check. PFR boleh ke tak boleh? Okay, so PFR, kita kira juga volume dia. So the volume of the first PFR equals to FA0 integrating from 0 to 0 0.2 dx per minus Re. So why are we integrating from 0 to 0 0.2? Because in the first reactor, they are converting from 0 conversion to 20%, uh, 0 0.2. Okay, so you know, kan, kita kena convert jadi Simpson one third rule. So become Fa0 delta x per 3. So Fa0 masih sama, 1.5. Uh, you got no problem with this. Uh, what about delta x per 3? So, kami ingatkan kita kena divide the x into 3 points. So, initial is 0, final x is 0 0.2. So, our initial point 0, our final point 0 0.2, our middle point or our middle x is 0 0.1. Titik tengah dia. So, delta x is the difference, right? Difference between initial to middle x or middle x to the final x. So, from initial to middle, 0 to 0 0.1, the difference ataupun julat dia 0 0.1. 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 pun julat dia ataupun the gap or the difference is also 0 0.1. That's why your delta x is 0 0.1 divided by 3. Then, in bracket, you have the 3 point. So, you become 1 per minus Ra at your initial x which is 0 plus 4 per minus Ra at your middle x which is 0 0.1 and plus 1 per minus Ra at your final x which is 0 0.2. Okay, so done. Then kamu just look at the table, find the value. So at 0, my x, uh, at 0, my minus Ra 0 0.053. At 0 0.1, minus Ra, 0 0.052. At 0 0.2, my minus Ra, 0 0.050. So, kamu ambil je tiga nilai ni. You replace into the equation. You get the volume of 5.79. Okay, so, first PFR, nak mencapai 20% conversion, I just need 5.79 dm cube. Okay, so again, kenapa kecil sangat? Sebab reaktor pertama tu hanya mencapai 20% conversion sahaja from 0 to 0 0.2. Smaller conversion, naturally reaktor yang diperlukan pun kecil sahaja. Dia tak payah reaktor yang besar kalau kita hanya nak mencapai small conversion. Okay, done. Okay, so we go to the second reactor. So again, sama konsep macam uh, CSTR, student tend to do mistakes at the second CS PFR. Or sometimes dalam exam, saya tak buat pun dua reaktor kedua kerana saya tanya reaktor ketiga, reaktor keempat dan sebagainya. So, you have to really understand concept. Okay, supaya nak tahu you, test exam memang takkan keluar bulat-bulat. Tapi, the understanding kalau kamu faham memang no problem. Okay, so let us calculate for the second PFR. So, volume for the second PFR equals to FA0 integrating from 0 0.2 to 0 0.8. So, kenapa? Because second reactor, I'm now converting from 20% to 80%. Kau bayangkan kita nak convert yang baki daripada 20% tu, kita nak convert sampai ke 80%. Okay, then dx per minus Re. Then Simpson one third rule. So, Fe0, still the same, Fe0 dia. Okay, next. Delta X per 3. So, part ni yang biasa student akan buat mistake sebab dia lupa initial point dia dah bukan kosong. Initial point dia dalam soalan ni adalah 0 0.2. Your initial is 0 0.2. Your final is 0 0.8. 
Okay, 0 0.2, 0 0.8. So, the middle X will be actually 0 0.5. Kalau kamu perasan, 0 0.2, 0 0.8. Titik tengah dia sebenarnya adalah 0 0.5. So, your middle X is 0 0.5. So, what about the delta X? So, delta X is the difference, right? Between antara 0 0.2 to 0 0.5, berapa difference dia? 0 0.3. Kata apa kamu nak kira kat belakang? Daripada 0.5 kepada 0.8 from 0.5 to 0.8 the gap or the difference or julat dia masih 0.3. So that's why your delta X is 0.3. Okay, so part ni, make sure kamu ingat sebab part ni your student has the tendency to make minor errors which is sebenarnya uh, kalau kamu perasan sebenarnya okay, dia tak uh, if you really check, actually it's not necessary to do that kind of mistake, okay? So, data X are done, divided by 3, then in the back, okay, the bracket, we have 3 points. So, 1 per minus RA at your initial X, which is 0 0.2, plus 4, uh, 4 ni pun, kadang-kadang sudah pun terlupa letak 4. So, bila saya keep reminding ni, bukannya apa, sebab memang I... This is a mistake that student tend to do. So, macam sayang lah. Sebenarnya student tahu nak buat benda tu. So, it's a little bit sayang in my opinion. Kalau student dah tahu tapi dia tersalah mistakes yang macam ni. So, that's why I keep reminding so that you don't do this kind of uh, easy mistakes. Okay. So, empat. Don't forget. Since the one third row tu mesti satu, empat, satu. So, four over minus R8 at your middle X. So, your middle X is 0 0.5. So, four per minus R8 when my X 0 0.5. Plus 1 per minus RA at my final X which is 0 0.8 lah kan. So kamu cari, you look at the table again. Pada 0.2 berapa minus RA? Pada 0.5 berapa minus RA? At 0 0.8 how much your minus RA? And when you replace, you get the volume needed is 32.72. Okay, so now come back to the same thing. Kita kena tengok. Boleh tak kita guna PFR ini? Tadi CSTR kita dah conclude tak boleh because second reactor tu volume yang diperlukan lebih besar daripada volume reactor yang sedia ada. What about PFR? Okay. So PFR yang kita ada 50-50 kan? Okay. Yang kita kira yang we calculated for the first reactor is only 5.79. We need 5.79. We have 50. Definitely boleh. So reactor pertama biasanya takkan ada masalah. What about second reactor? So second reactor, what we need is 32.72 and I have 50. Okay, definitely reactor kedua pun kita boleh guna. So dalam case ini, for this uh, PFR configuration, both reactor volume calculated is lesser than the available volume we have in the plant. Hence, we can conclude the PFR can be used in the uh, plant. Okay, so uh, let, let's say kalau kalau soalan dalam exam ke dalam test, you have to really dah kira kamu kena tulis jawapan dia. Kenapa kamu kamu kata, okay, PFR boleh digunakan. Kenapa CSTR tak boleh digunakan. Okay, so you can see this is a problem solving question of which untuk kamu menjawab persoalan dia, kamu kena calculate from the numbers, then you can answer whether it's feasible or it's not feasible. Okay, so as usual, I will give you about uh, two, three minutes for you to try to attempt if you have the things in front of you. I will switch off gadget camera and uh, volume. I will come back in two, three minutes time. Okay, so please do it if you have time uh, at the moment. All right.